So, welcome to this lecture on advanced uh, digital system design in the course uh, digital system design with PLDs and FPGAs. Uh, uh, the last uh, few lectures we have been discussing uh, some issues in the controller FSM issues and the last lecture we have looked at the problem of state assignment. Uh, we have found that it is a an intractable problem uh, to do it systematically. So, we have uh, tried some heuristic um, approach uh, to minimizing the area. Then we have looked at the problem of unused state, uh, what problems it can create and how to handle it uh, for a fault tolerant finite state machine design. Okay. So, when I say fault tolerant it, it depends on the application, but nowadays in general it is not a big problem to take care of that because we are not limited by too much by the area. So, it is better to take a safe approach. We have not completed that maybe the last few slides were kind of uh, remaining. So, in this uh, we are going to review that part. So, at that time I will complete and continue with some more issues uh, in the finite state machine. I am, I am hoping to complete that today and look at the issue of synchronization briefly because we, we cannot uh, kind of uh, take an extensive uh, analysis and all that in this course we do not have uh, time it takes uh, some quite a few lectures to complete it. But then in a gist uh, you know what is what is the problem what need to be done at least something which can be done uh, routinely that we will see but there are advanced techniques which uh, you may have to refer to the to the literature. So, let us go into the last uh, week slides um, last lecture slides. Um, so, this is what we have uh, seen we have looked at the problem of state assignment. Suppose a, a state diagram or a state machine has number of states as s then the number of flip flops are n. Okay. Uh, so, which is log s to the base 2 the ceiling of log s to the base 2. Okay. Uh, to make it an integer and now the moment you have n flip flops uh, 2 raised to n possible states are there. The assignment uh, talks about assigning this 2 raised to n to s. Okay. First of all uh, how many possible ways to do the state assignment it is a problem of permutation because states are unique and this 2 raised to n possible uh, states uh, are also unique. Okay, so it's a permutation. So it's a permutation of two raised to n uh, comma s, and uh, for even a reasonable size FSM, it's a medium level FSM. We can say uh, like states is 17 and n is 5. We will end up with a huge number of possible assignments. And uh, suppose our aim is to minimize the logic area of next state logic and output logic then this is an intractable problem. So, we look for um, the heuristic solution to these two problems and uh, definitely if you look uh, we are as far as say you take the next state logic optimization wherein we are looking at the next state as a function of the present state and input. So, when you minimize we are trying to uh, play with the min terms which is formed of the input condition and the present state and what we have controlled is the states because we are assigning the states. So, that tells that if we look uh, in the next state table and uh, this is what we have controlled you know I have written the assign the state but assume that this is SI and this is S day we are trying to find and this is SK you know both are SK. Okay. Now, I put kind of numerical values, but uh, assume that this state is SI, this is SJ, this is SK and SK. So, uh, if SI and SJ transit to same next state SK under the input same input condition, then we will end up with say when you form equation for D2, D1 and D0. See D2 has two ones and the min terms are like that and you know that it differs since I have assigned this as 0 1 0 0 1 1 it is logically adjacent and when you group it all rest are same 
and when you play with logic uh, law adjacency theorem this q0 literal will go off uh, from the resulting resulting kind of phi literal uh, product term okay so that is how it happens so you can, this can be applied uh, to the uh, more number of states but there is no fun in trying to do that with the three states it should be in powers of uh, two because we can eliminate uh, if there are four kind of uh, logically adjacent um, assignment then we can remove two literals then if it is eight then we can remove three literals and so on. But these are as you go higher the chances are less but definitely this like two states uh, producing the same next state for same input condition is a possibility. So that is what is shown here and now this throws up a and that is what formally stated and I have told that even if um, like there is a situation suppose these are not same for D2 if both are one it like if you have exhausted all possibilities and nothing is working out even in this case suppose these are different even D2 is one and if you can have logically adjacent kind of assignment at least for the D2 uh, the equation will be kind of area will be minimized because you should know that we are not talking a single kind of logical circuit. We are talking about a um, logic circuit for D2, D1 and D0 which comprises together it comprises the next state logic um, circuit okay. Now this kind of prompts us uh, how to do the output uh, logic minimization a heuristic uh, which say for a more kind of output we say if there are SI, SJ transit to same SK sorry it produces same output okay because the output is a decode of the present state. Then this being same if we can make this SI and SJ logically adjacent which is an example is shown here 0 1 0 0 1 1. So when you work out uh, the, the minimization for O2 then we see that the q0 is removed okay. So and this can be applied to the powers of 2 like 2, 4, 8 and so on and in the worst case even if it is okay if for one output it works okay. So that can be done and I am um, not sure whether the tools uh, do it but then um, you can try it even manually but at least if the tools offer such a thing you can choose uh, some kind of options. Uh, while synthesizing or write some attributes in the VHDL code to be able to do that by the by the tool okay. So that is a, 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 a formal statement then we have looked at this the problem of unused state like you have S states and N flip flops okay. And now uh, when you take N um, the log S to the base 2 will, could be a fraction and then we take a ceiling. So there are some kind of states which is a kind of left which is not required here because we are taking a ceiling we are taking the, the, the highest integer from this and so we have 2 raised to n minus s number of states which is unused. An example is shown here like if number of states are 5 then we will have to use 3 flip flops for binary encoding then there are um, 2 raised to 3 minus 5 3 unused state and then we said that suppose this is a state assignment we have used 0 1 2 3 and 4 there are unused state 5 6 and 7. Now how to handle this unused what to do with this unused state and, and what we said that by chance if some flip flop change state say here we took an example suppose uh, the state machine was in this state and it by like q2 has flipped its bit by noise then it gets in here what happens. So at least like we can list out all the, the possibilities one thing is that we can hope that it gets back somewhere okay. Maybe it is 101 uh, it get back to 100 by a flip or whatever uh, you can you know you can think of most probable case you know one bit um, uh, you know flipping and getting getting back to 100 or 001 if it gets back to 001 all the more better or uh, it could get stuck there it could loop through 
all or some of the states and so on. But the dangerous thing is that suppose it is looping through some states here and it produces some random output which suppose we have not taken care in the design then it could be very pretty uh, disastrous and uh, that is uh, so let us talk about the fault tolerance and uh, we have uh, seen an example where it can happen. Suppose we write uh, the next state logic um, VHDL code like that and we uh, say case present state is and say when S0, when S1 we say up to S4, up to fifth state and for when others we assume that you no know, let us minimize the next state logic uh, uh, kind of area and we said next state is down care okay this is a down care of the standard log logic and then uh, naturally uh, the synthesis tool is going to consider uh, the these states you know like uh, 5 6 and 7 uh, the way it wants you know it will be treated as as far as the next state logic is concerned this could be treated as 1 or 0 or 1 like that you know. And the way the synthesis tool uh, take it uh, 0 or 1 decide um, what happens once it reaches there okay. So we have taken an example uh, the next state suppose the synthesis tool is working on this uh, problem and uh, 0, 1 up to 5 is, is defined properly and 5 uh, sorry 0 up to 4 and 5, 6, 7 is not defined and assume that 1, 0, 1 we said irrespective of the input condition we have not specified it is a do not care. So suppose for D2 it is treated as 1, D1, 0, D0, 1 then what happens is that by mistake uh, like by some kind of error. Uh, the state machine get into this state the next state as as uh, by this table is 101 so it will get stuck there okay. Similarly um, in the case of uh, take this case you have states 5, 6, 7 we said do not care and uh, the synthesis tool treat it as 110 for this and 110 is 111 and 11 is 101 then you can see that it goes to 101 the next state is 110 so it comes here the next state is 11 it comes here next state is 101 so it loops through that and we have not even looked at what is the output okay your output uh, the way you write you know you might say that uh, during this state the output is uh, uh, some state 1 when others you say it is it is 0. So for all that maybe during this uh, 101 110 111 all the output may be 0. Uh, most most of the time it will end up like that and that could be kind of it, the way uh, the active logic is uh, kind of uh, defined uh, it could be dangerous because there could be some act, active low signal and which could like you have a maybe reset bar or enable bar or write bar then you will find that that signal um, is asserted and something happens okay. And depending on the application it could be disastrous. So we set the solution so it is not a good idea to leave it as, as do not care or not specified. We have to bring if it gets into a new state we have to bring it back to some uh, valid state you know that is uh, important. Uh, now when I say valid state uh, most of the time at least in we have to in, in the picture I have to show a, a some state I cannot there is no it is very illogical for me to show the arrows here or here. Uh, so I show it at the beginning this need not be true because this is a kind of uh, the power on initialization stage and um, blindly we cannot bring it here okay. So that you should uh, remember a new state should be brought back to a safe state it could be the init state but need not be okay. So like in the code when you say when others you should say next state is something some safe state it need not be in its state you have to look at the application okay. Do not like the problem with all this is that you uh, by habit you put an arrow like that and forever you will be putting an arrow like the, the some things 
um, habit builds and people put an arrow happily without ever thinking about it and or just write when others next state is the, the starting state and you think you are safe. It, it cannot I mean it can be disastrous again depending on the application because there could be this could be a very long drawn um, control of a, some huge machinery which is moving say I am maybe exaggerating but I always uh, whenever I see this picture I, I see uh, the space division they have a launching rocket you know and normally it gets assembled in one place and to the launching pad it moves uh, you know kind of over a, a trolley um, it takes maybe half a day or one day to reach there it goes all the way slowly. Uh, now as I said I am exaggerating assume that this is a state machine controlling that movement and by uh, say it has moved 80 percent and 20 percent is remaining uh, say half a day is remaining and uh, that state machine gets into this unused state and you just bring it back to the original and that poor uh, trolley which took uh, maybe almost a day to reach here goes all the way back there. You can imagine a uh, much dangerous uh, example um, like this is definitely an exaggeration uh, but uh, like you can take medical where human safety is involved and I suggest that uh, you be very um, kind of serious about as engineers very serious about what you are designing okay. Many people do not kind of do not uh, think too much about it but then I suggest that you are working in a team you gather enough information according to the policy of company that maybe you are working on a confidential thing uh, which the company does not want everybody to know every detail of it but at least know uh, the the what critical application you are working on and take enough precaution because uh, um, even for uh, the, the senior group leaders it is wise to uh, disseminate um, the required information to the engineers so that they can make a judgment in, in such scenarios because sometime uh, the designers only know these issues in detail not uh, the team managers sometime. So you have to take care of that. So that is what is uh, written here and definitely uh, there could be you might ask why not suppose um, the state machine was in this state and by noise it has gone there. Is there a possibility that it can can it come back to the same state ok. So now that is um, a tricky question you know that it is at least from without extra information is not possible because this state is something which is kind of memorized till the transition once it transit um, we are not storing the last state okay we are kind of we are deriving the next state from the current state okay but we are not like you cannot travel back you know we we, we have no logic to work backwards okay otherwise uh, you should keep a copy of um, I like the next thing to thing is that you keep another register you make a copy. But then the issue comes if by noise you know it gets here uh, how, how are you sure whether the, the copy is wrong or this is wrong ok. So it prompts that if you if you are adding redundancy then you have to have at least two copies and you have to take a majority vote like you have the state machine. So you have three kind of state transition happening. And if something goes wrong uh, you take 2 out of 3 voting and uh, do it. Um, there is another uh, interesting possibility uh, that you can use error correcting code um, for the state assignment. That means that you have to add redundancy to the state. Uh, it means that in this case suppose we add 2 extra bit parity bits and assume that there is a distance between these valid state ok. Like uh, if you have learned about error correcting codes the harming code and harming distance and all that uh, at least say 2 bit distance and if the 1 bit flips then you can decode uh, the maximum, maximum likelihood decoding which is the nearest neighbor decoding and all that. If you have learned some communication um, you will be clear about it but this could be done but this is at the cost of 
kind of extra parity bits, extra bits and in the case of error doing the decoding and all that you know that extra uh, hardware is required. So, which uh, essentially talk about the error probability. So, you have to really kind of determine what is the, uh, the probability of error or what is the mean time between failure of the state machine with regard to this unused state and if it is a not a very large number then you have to take a kind of um, call on uh, implementing this error correcting code and all that. It, it, it definitely should follow some analysis some reasoning blindly you should not kind of um, add these redundancies wasting area uh, you know maybe increasing the delay and so on. So, that is my uh, kind of call on this fault tolerance, but uh, it is always safe when you say when others uh, next state is an init state at least for this do not blindly write the init, init state you know uh, analyze application is there another possibility another uh, probable state where it can be brought back um, should be thought about. So, that is my advice on that. So, uh, let us uh, move back to back to the state machine again. So, here uh, you see this output logic let us concentrate on this for a while. Uh, many a times you find that say it may happen that this is quite fast next state logic is fast that means it, it is able to uh, kind of uh, make the state transition quickly, but this delay is is huge compared with this that means that you are you are slowing down the clock to match this output logic delay because output has to reach at the output. So, or uh, it may happen that there is an event and with regard to that event there is a state change and you are producing the output. Uh, when the state change happens you know that there is a TCQ delay from here to here then there is a T output logic delay. So, in response uh, to some input it might take a one clock period for the state to change then TCQ plus T output logic delay for the output to come. So, at least in some cases this output delay may not be uh, kind of tolerable I mean that may be high you know. So, the output delay is TCQ or TCO uh, plus T output logic you know that is what is written here. The question is that how can we reduce this output delay if required okay if required it is not that um, you should try to reduce it if, if you have implemented you have looked at the various delays and if it is okay with you go ahead there is no problem okay. You do not need to reduce it, but if, if there is a requirement to reduce it uh, how to reduce is the question and let us ponder um, you can think about it okay. Now, you are at will to go ahead uh, you know you can when I ask such questions um, I mean do not fast forward the slide and look at uh, the, the kind of slide when I ask such a question maybe you should pause and think about it okay. So, let us come back to the, the state machine diagram. So, we have a problem here the when the clock comes it takes TCQ time plus T output logic time. Uh, say so much time for the output to be valid okay and valid output comes after so much time okay. Now, the question is that can we reduce it okay. Now, there is there are two uh, ways kind of if you look at this um, block diagram very carefully or you say if you kind of contemplate on this this. Uh, block diagram as some would like to put it. So, here um, you know that the look at the present state. Present state is nothing but like upon a clock this next state becomes the present state ok. So, uh, what happens like uh, you have an input the next state logic is decoded and is ready here then a clock comes it is transferred here then it goes through the output decoding and the output is available. So, let us ask this question why not anyway the next state if it is ready 
instead of waiting for the clock to come and uh, for that to appear here let us take the next state and put this output logic here and take the output ok. We cannot take the output because uh, that we are expecting after the clock. So, let us put one flip flop a set of registers at the output if there are 3 output we will put 3 flip flops clock by the same thing. So, that when the clock comes the state change and the output also change and we need the state you know now do not think that the state is not required because state is required to kind of decode the next state. So, this is very much required but instead of waiting for the next state to appear at the present state and decode we will put the output logic here and then we have to put a, a set of flip flops at the output because the state change and the output change ok. So, that is one, one possibility. So, keep that in mind ok. The next possibility is so that is one good possibility. Uh, the next possibility is that think that there are say, um, say 5 states. So, we have 3 flip flops ok. So, q2, q1, q0 assume there are 3 outputs maybe some write bar enable or latch or something like that. Can we um, encode this output in q2, q1, q0 directly ok. That means whether we can take q2 as enable, q1 as write bar, q0 as latch or something like that ok. Now then it is a great thing because then need any logic this is removed and the delay is TCQ ok. Now the earlier approach also is the delay is TCQ because upon the clock uh, this output comes out of the register ok. So, these are the two uh, probable method and now let us look at the diagram. Um, so, this I have written. So, this uh, decoding uh, from the next state uh, looks like this. You have initially we used to put the output logic here. Now, we put output logic here next uh, at the output of the next state logic and we put the registers for the output and which is clocked by the same clock because it has to the output change has to synchronize with the, the state change ok. When this next state for which the output is decoded becomes the present state that output with regard to that next state is is available at the output ok. Now, there is an issue um, look at the register to register path because to decide on this clock frequency we need to consider now two path one is this this red line that is from the state flip flop q2 q1 q0 to d2 d1 d0 and there are 3 into 3 9 possibilities like q2 to d2 q2 to d1 and so on ok. So, 9 paths are there. So, we have to say t c q plus t next state logic plus t setup is a clock period. But you look at the other path where from this state flip flop through the next state logic through the output logic it reaches uh, uh, this output flip flop. So, you will have t c q t next state logic t output logic and the setup time ok. So, this is uh, uh, like you will be asking ok fine the output delays register I mean reduced, but what about this clock period. Now, the clock period might take um, a bad turn because it could be more, but mind you there could be some kind of consolation because next state logic is a combination circuit, the output logic is a combination circuit. Now, it is possible to put it together and minimize it ok. Now, instead of decoding from the input and the present state the next state and then decoding the output logic we could what I mean is that you can think of this as a single circuit where the output is decoded directly from the input and the, the present state. So, if the tool uh, is able to flatten it you know put uh, as a contiguous kind of circuit and minimize it maybe this next state logic plus output logic delay might be comparable to this original next state logic delay then we have done it nothing is is lost 
and output delay is reduced ok. So that is uh, uh, kind of one way of uh, dealing with uh, uh, the output delay. Now mind you uh, what with regard to VHDL coding is required is that we used to write init at the beginning like suppose if you are writing a process we will write case present state is when s0 what are the outputs which are in like 1 and 0 we write. So here instead of saying case present state is because it the output logic was here we say case next state is and uh, then that will generate the output and then you can register it or we can write this register and this logic together in a process because we have seen that a registers with the preceding combination logic can be written in, in one kind of uh, process ok. So you can say uh, if reset is 1 then uh, like all the outputs are 0 1 by 1 then you say else if rising edge of clock then you say case next state is. So this will be taken care ok. So that is uh, with regard to coding it is not a very um, difficult thing to code uh, straight forward. So it is a matter of coding it some change in the coding then you, you get it not much of a, a detail uh, it is just a minor detail ok. So the critical path delay is TCQ plus GNSL TOL plus T setup. Now if you look at um, both the delays there is no much difference like we have to consider from the previous clock delay ok the output ok then to, to compare equally that means that like in this a clock comes then TCQ, T next state logic then T setup then again TCQ and T output logic I mean that is that is how because we are now decoding the output from the next state. So we have to work from the, the previous clock period then only it can be compared but if you compare that um, like um, uh, like you have in the in this case you have TCQ plus TNSL plus T setup plus TCQ plus TOL ok that is a, that's a case that is what is written here. But if you look at this the same thing TCQ plus TNSL plus TOL plus T setup plus TCQ. So only the order is different from the previous clock edge uh, you know the total delay is same. But after clock edge uh, this will give you only just one TCQ you know that is a like earlier the boundary was here. So you, you like after a clock head you have get TCQ plus TOL but here uh, after a clock head only TCQ comes because the TOL goes before that ok. So uh, but we our only hope is our consolation is that when is both are minimized together this, this TNSL plus TOL could be greater than this TNSL plus TOL because that can get minimized ok. This cannot get minimized because there is a register boundary coming in between there is a next state logic then there is a flip flop here and the output logic. But here if you look at we have moved output logic before so between one register and the next register you have both together and that can get minimized ok. So from this kind of expression itself for a clever student you can make out what is happening uh, because I have written these terms in that particular order ok. So that tells you what is the advantage. So um, that is uh, about uh, output decoding from the, in the next state. So um, just a summary uh, we have started with the unused uh, state and we said that uh, for fault tolerance uh, that you have to bring the state machine to a safe state. Um, this is a good practice for irrespective of any design uh, do bring uh, uh, from the new state make a transition to a safe state. Then we have looked at the problem of reducing the output delay and we said there are two ways one is the decoding the output from the uh, next state logic than the present state but you have to register that output to be kind of uh, coincident handle with uh, the state change. And um, we have seen that from a previous clock edge point of view there is no difference we are playing with we are moving some logic 
which was after a register to the before the register. Um, but uh, in effect you have the output delay uh, is reduced from TCQ plus TOL to TCQ alone. But now the two combined circuit is in within uh, between two registers and that can be optimized and we are hoping that the clock period may not be affected so much you know that is uh, the crux of it. Now let's, let us look at the, the next um, technique where the output is encoded in the, uh, in the present state and if you remember uh, the, uh, the block diagram if you remember the lecture we have started the seriously not the introduction not the course policies and all that. Uh, when we started uh, this course the first lecture we have learned about the synchronous circuit as a kind of uh, structure of the sequential circuit. This is the um, kind of uh, the structure of a synchronous uh, counter okay. But the counter uh, may not be counting in, in uh, strict uh, sequence you know that you should remember. So you can imagine now we are back to a counter which is a maybe a crazy uh, a count it may go through it may go through all kinds of sequences depending on the input. But that count output or the state output itself is used as output and maybe at the outset you might think that no this is not going to happen this is not possible okay. Um, mind you um, it is more probable than you think because the reason is that um, we have we are not worried about the, the particular numerical value of the state. You said that we, we, we when we develop a state diagram we work with symbolic state we say S0, S1, S2 and so on then we assign it to reduce some area and all, all that. So the same technique can be applied because we have some two output and two flip flops say we like we have the freedom of choosing the state. So looking at the output pattern requirement if we go back and do the state assignment then it is possible that this might work okay. So that is the moment I say that uh, that should kind of um, kind of trigger some uh, light in your brain okay. So let us get back to the uh, to the diagram. Um, so here um, addition to that okay now let us let us look at it maybe we take an example say take this example okay. Uh, so the, the here the output delay no, no doubt it is a TCQ because as soon as the state changes uh, the next state the present state get next state and the output is same as present state. So it is valid so the output delay is TCQ exactly same as the previous uh, technique and assume that in our case we are 4 states uh, S0, S1, S2, S3 and there are 2 outputs assume again. Now this is a definitely uh, you will accuse me of cooking it up yes I have uh, kind of cooked it up but this these are the kind of possibilities like you have two outputs write bar and enable and if you care to look at it um, the, the S0 the, uh, the outputs are 0 1, 1 0, 1 1 0 0 okay. So these are unique pattern 0 1 1 0 1 1 and 0 0. So why not uh, to the state S0 we assign 0 1 like Q1 get 0, Q0 get 1 and S1 1 0 and S2 1 1, S3 and 0 0. That means that straight away the Q1 can be used as write bar and Q0 can be used as enable. So many a times um, you do not even look at that possibility. It may happen now, nowadays what happens is that you do such a uh, kind of um, uh, suppose um, uh, say the pattern was 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1 sequentially and uh, we have used enumerated data type then internally uh, the, the synthesis tool has done a sequential assignment. We have we have seen that 
most synthesis tool will do a sequential assignment which is nothing but 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 and it will automatically match you will find that uh, when the equation of the output is derived uh, the, the right bar will be you will find that it is automatically q1. But here it, it is not such a kind of uh, a nice uh, kind of matching like S0 is not 0 0, S0 is 0 1. So, synthesis tool may not do though it is very simple synthesis tool may not do that trick. But you, you have, we have looked at the kind of um, changing the state assignment by some attribute like uh, state encoding attribute, enum encoding attribute and so on. So, if you have used enum encoding and assign this state then you get you know without any output logic the output. So, this uh, even compared to the previous technique this is a very kind of possible technique which you should look at it ok. Uh, so, I have told you the reason why it works ok because we do not care about the state assignment. So, we can do that state assignment maybe it may not minimize the next state logic or output logic. Uh, output logic definitely because there is no output logic at all ok. Now, this is quite neat still you will accuse me of kind of uh, you know manipulating it to look very nice uh, possibility. Uh, yes I agree that now what we have done that there are 2 outputs there are 2 raised to 2 possible patterns ok and so 4 possible pattern and we have exactly 4 states and uh, these each pattern is not repeating it is unique. So, everything works out very nicely for us what if like in this case what has hap what would have happened if say in S2 the same 0 1 appears no then this there is a repeat. So, there is no unique output pattern to distinguish the state ok. So, that is a possibility like we have um, like this case you look at this case um, here the same scenario where the output pattern is different in state S1 the output is 1 0, S0 it is 0 1, S2 is 1 1, but when it comes to S3 it is again 1 0 ok. So, there is no way now to use Q1 as right bar because these two states are kind of identical, but we can do one thing we can add an extra flip flop ok. So, actually to encode 4 states we need only 2 flip flops, but for us to reduce output delay what we do is that we introduce one more uh, flip flop for the present state no harm ok absolutely no harm. So, that is what we are going to do it we introduce uh, like q2 there were only 2 flip flops we introduce an additional flip flop and where this pattern was repeating we made it different by making this extra bit 0 in one one of the state where the output is repeating and in the other state where the same output pattern is there we put it 1. So, now you look uh, this is 1 0 0 this is 1 0 1 rest of the places you can make it 0 or 1 it does not matter. So, we have made it 0 uh, there is no particular reason, but um, yeah you can make it 1 also like uh, this is something you should uh, know in, in, in kind of there is no great reason for uh, to choose 0 or 1 um, like as a pure logical exercise, but there, there, there may be some replication. Uh, with regard to the circuit because if you think of an n more circuit if the gate is 0 it is off gate is 1 it is. So, uh, like there could be there could be some differences something is made active the current is sinking. So, you should uh, think about those scenario, but then um, what I am saying is that uh, we can safely assign the default bits at 0. Now, uh, what we do is that we say state 0 is 0 1 0 state 1 is 1 0 0, state 2 is 1 1 0, state 3 is 1 0 1 ok. And now um, like then we use q2 as a right bar q1 enable and q0 we do not use it q0 is a press part of the present state because uh, uh, we have added this 
uh, to make this output uh, unique uh, like uh, uh, like to for this repeated pattern to to come in this two different state we have added extra bit. So, but uh, you might ask uh, you, have, you now you have three flip flops and there are eight possibilities and we have only four valid state there is unused state that has to be brought back and that needs some decoding all kinds of thing okay. And that may have some repercussion but if it is going to all 0 0 uh, it may not uh, add to the circuit so on there are but you, you think about it what are the, the possibilities. So, that is a game in encoding output in, in state bits uh, you do not have to first like you do not have to really worry about uh, like a number of outputs and the number of state bits and how many patterns are repeating like what are the total possibilities which is greater which is less and all that. Um, none of this uh, serious analysis not required what we are looking is at what is a repeating pattern ok. So, definitely if the, uh, the number of uh, like you have some 16 states only 2 outputs are there there is no way to kind of encode um, like uh, encode all that uh, you know the state bits using 2 patterns. So, you need extra bits if the number of outputs uh, the, uh, like 2 raised to number of outputs are kind of less than the possible state then you need anyway extra bit whether it is repeating or not. But in general you can look for the maximum repeat and try to make a make a difference because if there are more outputs and less states uh, definitely there is going to be repetition ok. So, that sh you should uh, understand that. So, we let us take an another example where uh, this is little more kind of uh, complex. So, we have 7 states S0, S1, S2, S3. So, uh, S4, S5 and S6 and we have 4 output ok. Now, once again I have put 4 output. So, possible patterns are 2 raised to 4 16 which is greater than the number of states. So, um, like uh, this should be enough ok uh, to encode, but you see there is repetition ok. So, you see that in state 1 uh, these 4 outputs are 0 1 0 1 like, like that and in state 0, 2 and 4 uh, the output pattern is 0, 0, 1, 0 it is repeating ok. So, we have 3 repetitions to make a difference we need 2 bit extra bit. So, we added that and we have assigned 0, 0, 0 here, 0, 1 here, 1, 0 here to kind of distinguish between these 3 and between these 2 we can make 0, 0 and 0, 1 rest can be 0, 0. So, we now assign in like q5, q4, q3, q2, q1, q0 and these are the, the kind of the state bits um, like 6 flip flops. Uh, frankly we, we require only 3 flip flops, but then uh, in this scheme we end up with 6, six flip flops and possible states are 64, but we get now the output directly encoded in the state bit like you have q5 as address 1, q4 as address 0, q3 as write, write bar and q2 as enable. No? So, this is a good uh, mechanism to reduce output delay. So, the rule is um, simply stated identify the state, state with same output value from this there could be multiple of such from this identify the state where one output pattern repeat maximum ok. So, uh, there could be like this case there are 2 state where output pattern is repeated there are 3, three states where the same output pattern is there pick up the 3 ok. Now, uh, check how many extra additional bits are required to make a difference make it and use the original bits where we started like q5, q4, q3, q2 as output then uh, then we are done. So, that is encoding output in state bits. Uh, so, quickly running through it uh, like this is the game uh, we are kind of uh, kind of encoding the output in the present state at the, at the beginning it looks a kind of uh, impossible kind of uh, thing to do, but then we remember that the state assignment is something which we have uh, the control flexibility. So, why not do the state assignments at that such a match happens 
and that is very easy when uh, the possible patterns and the number of states matches then you can do straight away. There is a repetition then you have to take additional bits and definitely as I said if the number of state bits uh, you know 2 to the power of number of state uh, number of outputs are kind of less you need anyway additional bits otherwise if it is greater then we have to look at the, uh, the repetition. You can work out that kind of uh, case and then um, you can do a, a proper state assignment to encode the output in state bit which reduces TCQ altogether it throws uh, the output logic. But uh, definitely you should be asking this question now we are playing with the state assignment what happens um, if this increases the next state logic delay. Um, yes these kind of questions should be asked analyzed. Um, I do not think the tools uh, do it because uh, the tools many a times choose a kind of fixed kind of state assignment with which this cannot be done. But then you can do a like in a at least in simple cases you can do an analysis and try to do this yourself. Maybe there are uh, the tools complex um, very good tools might try to do this you have to check uh, the, the tool uh, manual. So that is what is um, the, the, the maybe the last FSM issue that I am kind of discussing in this lecture. Um, now we have another issue uh, called uh, synchronization. So that maybe we will complete that um, in the course of uh, the next lecture and then we have to do uh, we will maybe we will look at uh, the devices called programmable logic devices. Then we kind of play with the tool before getting into maybe FPGA. Uh, we have to learn uh, the test bench uh, to be able to use the tool because we have I think we have learned enough to write uh, the VHDL code for data path and the state machine um, because you know all about the coding the um, combination circuit various syntax what it means how the simulation work how the concurrency is simulated just for your understanding. And we have looked in detail about uh, the sequential elements, sequential circuit registers, how to code uh, using various construct what it means and then we have looked at in particular about the finite state machine as a separate um, lecture we have handled it so that we have good grip on that. So this is good enough for synthesis but uh, to be able to do uh, a good development then we have to write the test bench. So I am planning to cover the test bench maybe I will uh, in the next uh, few lectures I will try to cover the programmable logic devices. These are being used less and less nowadays not too much application but um, from an academic point of view maybe it is wise to uh, look at it. It is a nice architecture but uh, it does not scale uh, to, to accommodate kind of complex uh, uh, circuit and um, it also has some certain problems like uh, lack of memory, lack of registers and so on. But for certain application um, it is it's good as an academic exercise to look at its architecture is, uh, is, a, is a good point because it tells how that architecture is how evolved and uh, the, the, the thinking process behind it is good. So we will look at it. I do not teach that uh, in my regular course uh, because um, uh, that is not being used very much so that I kind of avoid but then the course name itself had PLD uh, at the beginning um, when I gave the syllabus some time back. So I will stick with it, I will cover it maybe uh, uh, it will be, it'll be definitely academically useful though maybe application wise it is not you may not kind of end up using it. I do not know what happens after few years if you are kind of this is being recorded in 2013 um, what happens if you are listening to these lectures in 2015 I do not know whether that PLDs will be useful. But in any way uh, as I said I um, will be covering uh, the kind of synchronization in a one lecture or so then PLDs then uh, the test benches then we can look at the FPGAs and 
a case study uh, and play with the tool to wind it up and that will be a kind of good conclusion. So I think um, uh, today we have looked at um, basically a new state transiting back to the safe state. Then we have looked at um, uh, uh, the that was for fault tolerance. Then we have looked at the techniques to reduce output delay. One was decoding the output from the next state and registering it. And we have seen that analysis wise there is no kind of difference in terms of the terms involved but there is that within the register boundary the output logic and next state logic is coming together the minimization can happen maybe the total critical path delay can come down. Uh, second thing was that uh, the decoding the output in the present state though it looks kind of a less probable situation we have found that it is quite quite useful uh, thing to do and um, we have uh, looked at that technique the algorithm for it. So in the next lecture I am going to handle uh, the, the problem of synchronization very important thing as I said I cannot do all analysis uh, come out with various uh, uh, the expression for the, the fault tolerance and all that we cannot go in depth I cannot go into the flip flop this is something to do with the flip flop I cannot go in normally in, in, in the course I go into the flip flop try to analyze bring out uh, this issue why it happens a deep understanding from the that point of view but then if you accept uh, that problem uh, we will see at least how to handle it. Uh, the, the most uh, simple and most used techniques we will look at it the, without that I feel uh, the course would not be complete so we will look at it and um, so I hope uh, things are coming to the end of the course please revise otherwise when we kind of tying everything together at the, at the end you will be at loss. So we because when we have reached the FPGA then we will be kind of putting everything together. We will be putting uh, the digital system basics, we will be putting the, the VHDL, the FPGAs, the tool, uh, maybe some board exercise everything together. So unless you have a good grip it will be difficult to follow. Please go back and revise, um, learn it well and I wish you all the best and thank you.